Welcome to uh, Physics 1417 on Chapter 2. We're studying Newton's first law, but it's the second chapter, so it gets a little confusing. It'd been better if the first chapter had been an introductory, and then Chapter 1 was Newton's first law, Chapter 2 was Newton's second law, but that's okay. We'll deal with it. All right, so uh, let's get on with it. I'm going to try to do some lectures and demonstrations here that just kind of hit the highlights. Uh, I'm not going to cover everything. That's why you need to watch those recorded ones that are on the uh, module page. Uh, this one will be added to the module page, but this is more of the demos and things like that uh, that hopefully will kind of explain some of the other stuff, all right? Um, some of this, first of all, uh, we talked about Aristotle. Aristotle was one of the first people to start trying to explain the world around him, which was very good. Unfortunately, when you're the first, you don't know very much, and so if you're wrong, people, you know, uh, we spend most of our time saying, oh, remember Aristotle? He said this, but he was wrong, okay, because he was the first. But he thought there was natural movement, things like smoke that naturally moved up, and that's just what they did. You didn't have to do anything to make the smoke move up. It just did it on its own. Rocks would fall down like these over here on the landslide. That's just what rocks did. You throw a rock in the air, it goes up for a little bit, but then it falls down. That's um, So falling down for a rock would be natural motion. Things that it did without you having to supply any force were natural motion. Unnatural would be something you had to supply effort to to make it happen. Okay, uh, Pushing a wheelbarrow, throwing the rock up in the air, it just doesn't happen naturally, so you have to apply that would be unnatural motion. Okay, And for about 2,000 years, pretty much people just kind of went with what he said. No one really changed the rules much or thought too much about it. Galileo came around, and Galileo is another name we keep hearing. He was one of the first people to start measuring things and experimenting with things and seeing what would happen and so forth. And so he kind of is known as the father of the scientific method. Okay, and one of the things that he started studying was um, speed, okay, and uh, motion and how did things move. He had some very elaborate ramps and things uh, that still work very exact. He didn't have very good tools. He had to use, I guess, poles to measure things and things like that. But he came up with some very good studies of uh, motion and how it worked. And basically, uh, he said that if things went uphill, they slowed down. If they went downhill, they sped up. But he said if you had it on a flat surface, then it would just keep going forever if nothing acted on it, okay? And most of us would think, no, that's not really how that works, okay? So, for example, if we go over here to a bowling ball, I think we're supposed to be sitting on a desk. Oh, there it is, right there. I already know. Okay, we just happen to have one, so we'll use it. Okay, here we go. If I had this bowling ball, if I roll it, I'd roll it on the floor, but you couldn't see it, all right? So if I roll it, eventually, it will start to slow down. Okay, now, this is not a long enough surface. Okay, we'd have to roll it down the wall, but eventually if I roll it, it's gonna start going slower and slower and slower and eventually it would stop. Now, most people, when they look at that, said, hey, uh, the bowling ball, you put some force on it, and then when it runs out of that force, okay, it needs some more force applied to it, then it stops, okay? But Galileo was smart enough to figure out, just by looking at that, that no, it's not that it runs out of force. Once you put force on it, it would keep moving like that forever if there weren't some other force stopping it, okay? And uh, that was a big jump forward, okay, for somebody to realize that. And so he said, hey, there's another force there, friction, it turns out, okay? Now, he couldn't explain why exactly how much friction and how that worked. That wait for Newton. That's why Newton gets the name on the law, because he explained gravity. It explains why, but he said there's friction, okay? Now, on this bowling ball, and that's why the bowling ball slows down. So it slows down because another force acts on it. And if there was another force acting on it, it would just keep going forever, okay? And this is pretty impressive from a guy who could not go out in space or any other way and, and test this, but he came up with the idea that objects just want to continue motion, all right? And he came up with the idea of inertia, okay? Inertia means that an object resists any change in motion. In other words, if it's not moving, it wants to stay still, and if it's moving, then it wants to keep on moving. That's why you don't stand in front of a truck that's going 40 miles an hour, because it doesn't want to stop, okay? And they call that inertia, okay? And so really, he invented the idea of inertia, but this first law we're gonna talk about of Newton's is really known very often as the law of inertia. And so as he was studying these different things about this, he also came up with a formula, all right? And formulas, we're not going to do a lot of problems in this course, but formulas explain things, okay? And basically, speed is equal to distance over time. In other words, if you increase the distance and go the same speed, this will have to go more time. It will take longer for it to do that. So if I increase the distance, 
and I can do it in the same amount of time, what's that going to do to this number? If the big number gets bigger in a fraction, it's going to make this number bigger. So if I increase the distance I can run, so if, say I run a mile in four minutes, and you can only run a mile in two minutes, <laughs> I mean, I, excuse me, you can only run a, you can only run half a mile in, in four minutes, then I must be going faster. Why? Because I have a bigger distance in the same amount of time, okay? I can't run a minute mile in, in, in four minutes so if i don't worry about that okay so opposite if the time increases to run the distance okay so say we both run a mile same distance but one of us takes more time well if the big number is bigger then the, that means the speed is smaller so if you can do it in a small amount of time the same distance you're dividing the distance by a small number you're going to have more speed and that's really all it's saying is that if you increase the distance you cover in time you're going to increase you've increased your speed and if you've increased the time it takes you to run that distance, that's going to decrease your speed and, and so forth, okay? And so that's really all this formula tells us, and that's kind of what he came up with. Now, uh, once again, this is uh, more Galileo. I mean, he's doing these experiments to explain this. Now, there are different kinds of speed, okay? So if, say, for example, I'm going down the highway at 55 miles an hour, and the highway patrolman pulls me over the side of the road. Okay, um, and I say, hey, 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 I... I was, uh, I was, yeah, I know I was going 65 miles an hour in a 45 zone, but a minute ago, I was only going 30 miles an hour. So on the average, I'm about right, okay? He's not going to go for that, okay? Uh, he's going to say, no, I'm, how fast you're going at that moment, which is your instantaneous speed, okay? Your average speed is if you take how far you went, divided by how long it took you, your distance divided by time, that will give you your average speed. If you take the whole trip, time, okay? Uh, but instantaneous is how fast you're going at one speed. And then another idea is constant speed, okay? Constant speed is it's not speeding up or it's not slowing down, okay? For example, if I roll this bowling ball, it goes pretty much at a constant speed. If I put a mark at one second, at two seconds, at three seconds, they would be about the same distance apart because it's going the same distance in the same amount of time. And that is a constant speed. <laughs> oh, I can drag it stand there so it wouldn't go rolling up, but we'll see. All right. Uh, anyhow, so that would be the example of a constant speed. Uh, just for the record, in general, in the real world, you don't see a constant speed very often. Why? Because it's very hard. Even if you have uh, like cruise control in your car, it's it's going to go up or down depending if the road's flat or level. It, if it's good, it'll be within one mile up or down each time, but it's still going to change a little bit. But the idea of constant speed is that you're going exactly the same speed. And like rarely does it really happen in the real world very often, but it can. Okay. Uh, 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 Cruise control would be a pretty good example of that, okay? All right. Now, uh, a couple of other things he said. He came up with the difference between uh, speed and velocity. And just for the record, uh, physics books makes a big point of saying speed is not the same as velocity. But if you're not careful, you'll find them saying, oh, they use them as if they were the same, okay? Uh, so um, speed is how fast you're going. If you're going 60 miles an hour, that is your speed. But 60 miles an hour could be going in any direction, right? So 60 miles per hour in a certain direction is your velocity, okay? And so velocity includes two things. One, your speed, but also what direction you're going, okay? For example, if you know there's a tornado moving at 60 miles an hour, well, that's great, but you need to know which direction it's going. Because it's going the other direction, no sweat. If it's coming toward you, that's a whole different story, okay? So you need to know speed and direction. Therefore, we call that a vector quantity. So not only does it have an amount, a vector, uh, a magnitude, sorry, a magnitude how fast you're going, 60 miles per hour, it also gives you a direction. And we call those vector quantities, okay? And so if you're going at a constant velocity, all right, not only are you going at the same speed as this oops, uh, bowling ball is going, it has to go at the same speed, but it's also going in the same direction. It's going in a straight line, okay? So constant velocity means it's going at a constant speed and a constant direction, all right? Which is where Newton came in and said, oh, sorry, one last thing, sorry. <laughs> all right. Let's talk about relative motion real quick, then we'll go to Newton's first law, okay? 
uh, when we're talking about how fast you're moving, okay? If I'm sitting in a car going 65 miles an hour, how fast am I going? Well, if someone's sitting across from me in the car and says, hey, how fast are you going? It looks like they're just sitting there, right? They're not moving. They're not going anywhere, okay? But if I open the door and shove them out the door, which I shouldn't do, that's a bad thing. But when they hit the ground, guess what? They're going to hit it like they're going 65 miles an hour because compared to the road, they're going 65 miles per hour. Compared to the person next to them, they're not moving. They're going at the same speed, okay? And so that they, we have what we call relative motion, all right? In other words, how fast are you going compared to what, okay? Uh, so if I'm going 65 miles an hour and someone right next to me is going 65 miles an hour, if I look at them, they may not appear to be moving. Why? Because we're going at exactly the same speed and staying even with each other, all right? Uh, but if I'm coming up on a car in front of me, then we're moving at different speeds. And so... Um, how fast I'm gaining on them, okay? Say I'm going, someone's going 30 miles an hour in front of me and I'm going 60 miles an hour, I'm going to start catching up with that person, okay? Uh, on the other hand, if someone's going 60 miles an hour this way and I'm going 60 miles an hour this way and we're coming toward each other, we're going to catch up real quick and <laughs> meet in the middle and have a spectacular ex explosion, okay? So relative motion means what do we compare it to? Um, for example, are you moving right now? Am I moving right now? Well, I'm just standing here. I'm not going anywhere. But technically, the Earth is going about, oh, 50,000 miles an hour right now around the sun. And guess what? Everything on the Earth is also going 55,000 miles per hour. So you can move at speed of 50,000 miles per hour because you're going along with the Earth. Okay? All right. Um, so are you moving? Yes, you are. Also, you're spinning along with the earth as it's spinning on its axis and i'm not sure exactly what the speed is there but it's also a pretty big speed all right so if you feel dizzy some days don't worry about it it's okay you're really moving fast okay but, com but because we're moving at the earth the same speed as the earth just like those two cars looking at each other or two people looking across the seat at each other in a car going 65 miles an hour it feels like that person's not moving why because they're moving the same speed you are we're moving the same speed earth is so we don't consider that moving okay we don't notice that we're not aware of it. We are, but we're not aware of it, okay? And so uh, usually when we talk about our speed is what is my speed compared to the earth? When I'm going 65 miles per hour, well, technically I'm going 50,065 miles per hour if I'm going the same direction the earth is moving around the sun. You add it together <laughs> and I'm actually going that much faster. If I went the opposite direction, the earth is moving this way, then technically I would be going uh, whatever 50,000 minus 65 miles per hour is, okay? And so uh, usually if I say we're going 65 miles per hour, that's compared to the ground, which is the earth, okay? So usually we use our relative motion, our object of reference, if you will, is the earth, and we're comparing it to the speed that the earth is moving, all right? Okay, now we're ready for Newton's first law of motion. We'll come back to some of those ideas in a minute. All right, Newton's first law of motion. Objects at rest, stay at rest. Objects in motion, uh, stay in motion. However, that is not Newton's first law, okay? Very important parts that are missing out of that, okay? So let's look at it this way. Um, it says, objects at rest stay at rest unless a net force acts on them. Objects in motion stay in motion at a constant velocity. That means straight line, same direction, and same speed, constant velocity, unless a net force acts on them. Okay, now it was pretty impressive that, um, well, Newton too, for that matter, and Galileo both, both came up with this idea. Since they didn't really have a lot of the equipment that we have and so forth to measure that or to try to prove that. But let's come over here and look at this contraption. Hopefully, I will be able to show it to you. There you go. All right, this is uh, call it air track, okay? It has a little slider thing on it, okay? And it is hooked, of course, over here to a vacuum cleaner. Shop vacuum. All right. Or shop vac, if you prefer. Very fancy high dollar one. I bought it at Lowe's or Walmart, I forget. Anyhow. All right. And we have hooked it on it, and it is blowing air through this metal. This is like very cheap metal. Trust me, it's about $300 or $400 metal. I don't know what they do to this thing if they line it with gold, but it's expensive. All right. So it shoots air up through here. Now, if I had this slider, you notice I slide it, it doesn't do much. So even though I'm putting a force on it, unlike what Galileo said, it doesn't just keep going. Why? Because there's another force acting on it to slow it down, and that is friction. When this rubs against this, even though they're both fairly smooth, 
it doesn't go very far. Okay. Now I'm going to turn on this. this. It's going to push air out. The air, just like an air hockey uh, game, will push it just enough so that there is not any friction there. All right. Now I'm going to talk right now because once we get it going, you can't hear it. Okay. So we're going to see what happens when I put it and there is no friction. All right. Testing what Galileo said. You will notice it goes back and forth, back and forth. All right. It's going back and forth pretty much at the same speed. It's not losing much of its speed. Why is that? That's because there is no friction. And so once again, what Galileo said was correct, and Newton came back later, said if there's not another force acting, if there's no force acting on it, then it will just keep moving at the same speed, with the same amount of uh, speed and constant at a constant velocity until something changes it. Now, as soon as I turn that off, then friction started acting on it, so that new force changed it. All right? Just for the record, is this going at a constant velocity right now? Yes, it is. What is that velocity? That velocity is zero. Okay? So just for the record, that is a constant velocity, and it's going to sit right there, according to Newton's first law, until some force makes it start moving. Okay, so it's if there's no force acting on it, then it's going to try to move. All right, now let's try another thing. See if we can shoot this. All right, uh, this is a, just another way of saying the same thing. We have a it looks like a soccer ball, but it's really flat like this. Okay, and it's got this. It's got a light. Ooh, yeah, pretty. All right, all kind of pretty lights there. Okay, but it also has a little fan in there that blows the air out the bottom. You can't feel that, but if you put your hand right there, you can feel it. All right. And if I put this down the ground, all right, and I hit it, it goes in a straight object until it hits a force, it hit my foot, and then I hit it again. And it's going to continue to move pretty much in a straight line at a constant velocity until some new force acts on it. Okay, now there's also bumps on the floor, and this is probably not a flat floor, so it didn't go perfectly straight. But you see the idea. Basically, that's still... The same thing that Newton said all those years ago and Galileo, that if there's no new force acting on it, it's just going to keep going in a straight line at the same speed, which would be a constant velocity, okay, until a force acts on it. But when it stops, then it's still Newton's law. He says the same thing. It's going at a constant velocity of zero. So it's still going at a constant velocity of zero until a force acts on it and makes it start moving. Okay? All right. Now, um... Something we didn't say about inertia. What what can the different th things have different inertias? And the correct answer is yes. Yes, they do. Okay. But what determines that? How do we know something will happen? Well, basically, it turns out that inertia is determined by mass. Okay. And so basically, the more mass something has, the more inertia it has. All right. And so um, if I ask you which has more inertia, a semi truck or uh, my little Honda Accord, uh, we would say the semi truck. So guess which one has more inertia? Okay, that would be the pickup truck. Okay, and so if I want to change its motion, inertia is the resistance to changing its motion. Uh, if it has inertia, it doesn't want to change. So when I push the semi truck, it doesn't want to start moving. Why? Because it stopped and objects at rest. I want to stay at rest until on that force charges them. Okay. Um, and objects in motion will stay in motion. But in this case, that truck has more inertia than my Honda Accord because I, it, I'm going to be able to push the Honda Accord and get it moving eventually. I'll probably never get that semi-truck moving, okay? Unless I'm in the strongest man competition or something. I'm not there, okay? So um, basically, the more mass it has, the more inertia it has, okay? Now, what if I have that semi-truck parked on the side of the road or I have a semi-truck going around 65 miles an hour? Which one has more inertia? They are exactly the same, okay? And they are both going to resist a change in the movement, okay? Now, it would be more painful if I try to stop the one that's moving, but technically they have the same inertia. And we'll talk more about that when we get into some of the other channels, our chapters. Okay, um, let's talk about inertia here a little bit more. All right, uh, we have a new... All right, we have a little get up here so you can see that good. 
Uh, all right. So uh, right here, we have a board. And it has a weight hanging from it. I'll get out of the way so you can see it there. There's a weight hanging from it with a string, and there's a string underneath it. Now, a question I would ask, if I were going to try to make money, I'd say, hey, I'll make a bet with you. I'll bet you can't guess which string will break if I pull on the bottom. Will the bottom string break, or will the top string break? String break, not spring break. Okay, the larger spring break. Okay, so this is attached to the bottom. This is attached to the top. If I pull... Which one will break first? Well, let's see. So I'm going to think. You said, oh, you think the top one will. Okay, so let's put $50 down. And, oh, that's too bad. You were wrong. The bottom string broke. Someone said, well, Mr. McMurray, you shouldn't be encouraging people to gamble. Okay. Well, I still got a little bit of string here. That I'll give you a chance to get your money back. Let's bet $50 that if I pull this, and this time you can say that the bottom string will break. And so it's like, great, that's not like a good deal. All right, but this time, oh, that's too bad. The string broke up here. You lost $100, okay? <laughs> okay, why did that happen? Why is it not the same each time? All right, remember, it's not gambling if you know the science. It's a guaranteed outcome. All right, so here's the deal. This is a very heavy weight. It has a lot of inertia. If I pull really fast, inertia means it doesn't want to start moving. So if it doesn't move, it's not going to break the top string. I pull real fast, it's going to break the bottom string off. Okay. But if I pull slowly and give it time to overcome the inertia and start moving, then it will break on the top string. All right. So, money. that's a good way to do it. Just got to find someone who has $50 and is willing to bet it and make the experiment work. But all you need is two by four, an eye hook, some string, and a weight if you do it right. Okay? All right. Who said science wasn't useful in the real world? Um, let's see. What else have we not done? Um, all right. Let's do one more thing over here. Look at this. I don't know. I need to really afford to get me a, a newspaper or a camera, man. Uh, well, let me see. All right. Well, let's just do it. I'll hold it up and then I'll point it out to you. Okay. So, right here we have a uh, pie tin, it's been, a pizza tin, whatever, has been cut. Gonna go like Pac Man. I'm chomping at you. Okay. But, anyhow, if I take a ball bearing, Okay, still ball bearing. And I run it around. Oops, sorry, I'll get back over here if I'm in there front of there. Okay, and I run it around here. Okay, it'll obviously go around the rim. But what I want to know is what will happen when it gets over here to the edge. Will it go flying off to the side? Will it go straight ahead? Or will it curve back this direction toward the other part of the pan? All right, I think that's a good question. All right, and being. Inspired by Galileo, who was the father of scientific method, and said, hey, we should check this out. Okay, I'm going to set it down, and we're going to try it. Okay, hopefully you can see that. Good enough, anyhow. Okay, uh, let me get it over here a little bit so you can get this a little bit. Okay, so we're going to take it over here, and see what happens to it. Okay, so when I put it around over here, it does, in fact, Go straight down the thing. Now, uh, I'm not quite straight because I thought I didn't have it straight, but you know, there we go. And it goes pretty much in a straight line after that. So here's the deal. When it's on the pie tin, it wants to go, according to Newton's law, it wants to continue to go in a straight line at the same velocity once I touch it, right? But the side of it is pushing in on it, so instead of that, it gets this curve. It wants to go straight. The pan wants it to go down, and so it kind of goes in between that, which is a perfect curve. But once it gets to the end here and comes off, now it only has inertia, which says it wants to keep going at a constant speed and velocity, so it will go shooting off at a straight line. Okay, once again showing what, that, uh, what Newton and Galileo said is in fact correct. All right, let me pause for a second. Whoops, not ready. All right, let's do some more fun. All right, we have here, uh, looks like a mobile or something maybe. We've got a soccer ball, looks like on one side, a tennis ball that looks like a basketball on the other side. Okay, 
All right, this is, um, could be a hit year if it was uh, Halloween, it's a little early for that, but you could go as some kind of a weird antenna creature or something, okay? But let's try this again. If I'm right here and I put it on my head, which has no friction, not much anyhow. All right, if I turn very quickly. <laughs> well, let's try it again. Okay, here we go. All right, try again. If I can turn quickly and not hit the things on the end, they don't move very much, okay? They do move some, okay? I can't help that, okay? But it's a very important skill they don't teach at school to do that. But you can kind of see, as I start turning, it stays still. Why? Because it has inertia. There's not enough friction between my head and it. Unfortunately, it also not enough friction to keep it up there. It keeps sliding off. Very helpful if I had a little bit of hair. But basically, it is not enough friction, and so it's inertia. It does not move. I'm exerting a force on my body, but my body is not exerting a force on that, and so uh, it does not move. All right. Uh, this is a knife. Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm certified to carry a knife. It's okay. All right. Don't worry. I won't hurt you. All right. Say I put a, just barely stick it in to barely in there. Okay. Now, if I were to slam this, slam this and stop the hand with the knife, what's going to happen to the potato? This is a sweet potato. Cheapest thing I could find. All right. Probably should have got a real potato or a regular potato or a, uh, apple but i was cheap okay so i went out with 50 cent sweet potato okay so i'm gonna move it and then stop what's gonna happen well if i do this up whoa okay i put a force on my hand which is holding the knife so it stops the knife it does that but it does not exert a force on the sweet potato so it has inertia it has mass and it continues on going just like it was before and goes flying off okay now we can try it the other way around so if I can turn this to where you can see it on the table. And maybe, maybe not. Let's try it. Definitely could get that. Okay. Say so I bring the knife down and it's on farther. If I do it again, a couple times, I can get a knife through the potato. Okay. Now, why does that happen? Well, when the knife hits the floor, uh, on the desk, the desk exerts a force on it. It stops the knife, but the potato is not being acted on as much. It is some, because there's a lot of friction between them, but not very much. And so it continues going until the force of friction slows it down, okay? And so it will eventually put the potato on the knife without me ever actually touching it or stabbing it into it or whatever, okay? So in case you're ever having trouble getting your knife in a potato, there you go. Might come in handy. All right. And a couple of last things um, of, of these demos, and then we'll move on to something else. All right. Uh-oh. Ah, there it is. Okay. Let's see if this works. All right. These are called gravity beads or various things you can call them. Uh, let me see if I can move it back a little bit. All right. Okay. And I take one out of this. Now, they're just stacked in here. Okay. I'll see if I have to be restacked or if it's been done right. Like, uh, I hate that. Hasn't been done right. Hang on, we'll be right back. All right, let's try this again. We got our gravity beads here. I got some out. I'm going to throw them up in the air, let them fall, and and they just keep falling until they are completely gone. Why? Once again, inertia. An object of motion stays in motion. It wants to keep mo moving until some force acts on it. Since no force acted on it to stop it, then it just kept on going, period. All right? All right. Let's see, we have uh, one more over here, a couple more over here. Let me see. All right, let's see if we can find a better place for this one. All right, and it's going to be right here. And this one, you've probably seen before, but it you know, good. All right, we're going to put a coin on a card on top of the jar. Okay, now if I pull the co card out here, what's going to happen? It's going to come off with the card. <laughs> you thought I was going to do something different, didn't you? Okay, but that's because I did it slowly and I overcame the inertia of the, the coin. However, if I do this fast, I make a big mess. Okay, hang on. Let me try this again. Okay, let's try again. Let me get a bigger coin. All right. If I have a bigger coin. All right, if I do this fast, still having a rough time with this one today. Okay, let's see. 
There we go. It will fall into it because it is exerting a force pushing down the card. Okay. As soon as I pull the card out, if I pull it fast, it doesn't have time to overcome the inertia of the heavy, more massive coin, and the coin stays here. Once I pull this out, now gravity pulls it down into the thing, whereas before it was pushing it on here. Okay. Speaking of which, this is also one of the forces you need to know about. It's called the normal force. Okay. Normal in this case means perpendicular to. Okay. So perpendicular to. So there's a force that is perpendicular to the surface. And so gravity is pushing this down. There's also a force pushing up. Perpendicular. So you notice that you put a little square right there. Okay. Perpendicular to the surface. Any surface, there's a normal force pushing between the jar and the thing between the jar and my laptop anything like that has a normal force the normal force in this case means normal to like in math they tell me that means perpendicular right or, but yeah so it means perpendicular to it all right so the normal force um once this is moved there's no normal force and so now you only have the force of gravity pushing it down all right now um, let's talk about net force for a second while we're talking about this okay so gravity is pushing it down how hard is the normal force pushing back up on it? Well, it's not moving. It's not changing its velocity. It's not speeding up, not slowing down, not starting to move, not stopping. Okay, so it's not changing. It's going at a constant velocity. So that means that um, there is no net force. Net force when you subtract two things. So the force of gravity and the net normal force are equal, and therefore the net force is zero. Therefore, there is no change in velocity. Okay, it has a velocity of zero, and it still has a velocity of zero. And however long you look at it again, it will have a velocity of zero. There is no change. Now, notice though, it does not mean that there is no velocity. In this case, it does. The two forces are balanced. This pushing down, that pushing back up, and it's not moving anywhere. But let's do it this way. All right. And I have my bowling ball. All right. And I'm going to move it here. If I hit it on both sides with the same amount of force, then guess what? It still is moving at a constant velocity. Why? Because the net force is still equal to zero. If I hit it equally hard on both sides, it doesn't change. Okay, it just keeps going at the same speed in the same direction. Now, if I hit it, if it's going at this, and I hit it from one side, now I have an unbalanced force, and you notice it changed direction, and this is my laptop, which is a good thing. But that's the difference, okay? Uh, net forces um, mean that there is no change in velocity, which means... Oh. All right, so to show that all right, to show that there's a difference between those two kinds of um, constant velocity or net force equals zero okay equilibrium means things are staying the same and so we call this equilibrium when it's not moving it's just sitting here there we go all right then we would say that it's an equilibrium but it's not moving it's zero just like the coin on the card that is static equilibrium all right now if it's rolling at a constant speed in a constant direction i'm hitting it on both sides but it still stays in equilibrium at a constant speed, but it's moving at a constant speed of velocity, then we're going to say that is dynamic. Dynamic just means moving. Static means still. All right. So static equilibrium means object has a constant velocity of zero. Uh, dynamic equilibrium means it's moving, but since it has a constant velocity, it is still at equilibrium. Okay. So dynamic equilibrium. Okay. Another thing we want to talk about is uh, how many forces uh, can you have and still have a net force of zero? Okay, well, here's the deal. If I have a net force from this side and a net force from this side, can they cancel out? Yes, if two people came and kicked this real hard from opposite sides, the same strength, they would cancel each other out. You'd have a net force of zero and probably a couple broken toes, okay? Could we do it with three people? Yes, one hit here, one hit over here, one hit over here. Uh, is that 68 or 128 degrees apart, whatever, and they could all cancel out each other. Okay, so any number of forces can give you a net force of zero, except, and zero forces could give you a net force of zero. Okay, obviously will always give you a net force of zero. So what's the only number of forces that will not give you a net force of zero? And that is one. One is the loneliest number. Why? Because one force 
is going to cause it to uh, change its um, velocity and direction and therefore it's going to cause it to accelerate and not have a constant velocity all right and so it doesn't really matter anytime you have one force you can't balance one force against itself okay so you've got to have at least two forces or zero forces uh, or two or more but you can and they can all be balanced no matter how many forces there are you could make them balance but you can't make one force ever be balanced all right let's do a couple more demos and then we'll be done Okay, here we go. Uh, this is Mr. McMurray. This is called a Moroccan waiter tray, which reminds me never to get a drink ordered in Morocco. But anyhow, uh, basically we have a tray here. We have four containers, and yes, they do have water in them. I don't know if you can see that, but trust me, there is water. Okay, and all four cups. All right, now if I swing this correctly, good news is if you're seeing this at home, you don't have to worry about getting wet. Me, on the other hand, I keep the towel handy. All right, here we go. Here we go up. And as long as I keep it going, we're good. All right, we have no spills. And there we go. All right, no spills, no thrills. All right, but that's good. That's what that means I don't have to clean it up. Okay, and once again, this has to do with inertia. Uh, an object you rest does not want to move. And that's why it, if you have a car broken outside the road, it's easier to, to keep it moving once you get going than it is to get it moving. When you get it moving, it takes more force to overcome the inertia and then uh, then, then it has to keep it going once you get it on the road, okay? Uh, but yeah, these, when they're swimming upside down, they don't have time to overcome the inertia before they come back around. And so, uh, anyhow, if you do it right, at least you don't get wet. All right, we got one last one, uh, a little trickier one, literally tricky, and we will be done. All right, now this last trick is gonna be, well, tricky. Uh, but we're going to try it. All right. Inertia. All right. We know inertia depends on mass. So to increase the amount of inertia, I put water in the glass and water in the soup bowl here. And I put some weight on the plate, but basically it's a battery, just like you might get a <laughs> charge out of that. All right. Sorry about that. Good enough. Okay. Now, uh, the problem with this trick is I only do it twice a year. And all good magicians practice their trip, uh, trip, trip, yeah, their tricks. Constantly, right? Okay, uh, so it's kind of a trade off on this trick because you want the objects to have mass because that increases their inertia, which means they don't move when I jerk on this. Unfortunately, that also means the more mass they have, the more they press down because they have more friction and you don't get too much friction there. I don't know. I think I'm going to try to find something else for the plate. I think it has a little too much. Uh, there we go. All right. Now, uh, to pull this out, you have to uh, pull quickly and down so you can uh, overcome the inertia very quickly. And so here we go. One, two. Oh, hang on. Okay. Take loose. Here we go. All right. One, two, three, four, five. I can count up to 20 if you want me to. Okay. Okay. Quit stalling. Here we go. One, two, three, four. <laughs> okay, let's do a practice swing here, okay, real quick, just to make it. All right, make sure I have my technique down. All right, there we go. Works great like that, so let's try it. All right, here we go. One, two. <laughs> Three, all right, I didn't do so well there. Okay, uh, we got about half off, okay, uh, but that's the way it works sometimes. Uh, <laughs> I would like to say, oh, I'm going to go back and we uh, do it right now and do it correctly, but we'll, we'll see how that works out. Uh, maybe, maybe not. All right. But that's why I'm a teacher and not a magician. All right. Uh, anyhow, I uh, hope you have a good week. Uh, don't forget, questions are due coming up and a quiz next week again. All right. Uh, so get those questions turned in. I think a lot of people already have, so that's impressive. And uh, we'll see you next Thursday. Uh, after I dry out.